Hey guys, welcome to another Final Cut Pro tutorial. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can create a super slow motion effect like this. Let's dive straight into how to do it. If you want to create super slow motion, you need to know a little bit about frame rates and how the frame rate of your footage and of your timeline affects how much you can actually slow down a clip by. Let's take a look at a few typical examples of how you might slow down footage. You might have footage shot at 60 frames per second on a 30 frames per second timeline, which means you can slow down the footage by a maximum of 50%, allowing Final Cut Pro to play every frame without dropping frames or holding on a specific frame for longer than the duration of one frame. I hope that makes sense but you can calculate the maximum amount you can slow footage down by by using this simple formula. The frame rate of your project divided by the frame rate of your clip, and that will give you the maximum percentage. Now, it's an easy calculation to do. You probably don't need a formula, but it does help when you're working with certain other frame rates. Let's say I have footage that's shot at 120 frames per second that appears as 119.88 frames in Final Cut Pro, and I want to put that footage on a 23.976 frames per second timeline. I can slow the clip down by a maximum of 20% without dropping any frames. Now that you understand the relationship between frame rates and the maximum amount you can slow footage down by, let's have a look at this clip of Donna walking around Wawel Castle in Krakow in Poland, which was shot at 120 frames per second and is on a 23.976 frames per second timeline. This is it played back at normal speed. Now I want to slow it down to the maximum amount to see what it looks like. I can select the clip, Come over here to the speed icon, choose a custom speed setting and make it 20%. If you're doing that for a lot of clips, especially ones that have different frame rates, it could take a really long time to do it this way. So a quick little tip to help you save some time is to select the clip or select all the clips, come over to the speed icon and select automatic speed. That will tell Final Cut Pro to play every frame of the clip, which essentially sets the clip to play back as slow as it can without dropping any frames. Here's the clip played back at 20%. The slow motion is still pretty smooth because we're not dropping any frames here, but let's say I want the clip to be slower, maybe at about 5%. I'll let it render and then I'll play it back. You see how it jitters and just looks really bad? That's because Final Cut Pro is having to keep each frame on screen for the duration of four frames. If I go through frame by frame here, you can see what I mean. Using the arrow keys, I can go through frame one, two, three, four, and then we see the next frame. This is where the magic of optical flow comes in. By using optical flow, Final Cut Pro analyzes your footage and tries to determine the direction of the movement in your shot. Then it'll generate new frames based on that analysis, allowing you to slow down the footage even further. Let's take that same shot at 5% speed and we'll go over to the speed icon over here, down to video quality and select optical flow. It will take a little while to analyze the clip and when it's done, I'll let it render and it looks like this. See how much smoother that is. Here you can see the two shots with and without optical flow and you can clearly see the difference. Look again at how well it does to generate new frames even with the smaller details like Donna's eyes. So this example was shot at 120 frames per second. But what if you have a shot that was shot in 24, 25 or 30 frames per second that you want to slow down? You can still do it and get some really good results. Take a look at this drone clip from Lake Bled in Slovenia shot using the Mavic Mini at 25 frames per second. This is the shot at normal speed. Now I'll come into the speed settings, make it 50% and turn optical flow on. And this is what it looks like. I'll push it even further to let's say 10% and look how clean it looks. Here's another shot at 23.976 frames per second at normal speed and then slow down to 25%. Now, optical flow is not going to work with every single clip. Sometimes it struggles to generate the detailed areas of a frame and it starts to create this weird warping look as it tries to generate new frames. Have a look at this clip that Donna shot of me walking around Wawel Castle in Krakow. This is it at normal speed just for reference. And this is the same clip at 50% with optical flow turned on. It starts off looking okay, not great, but just okay, especially around my legs. And then this other guy walks into the frame and it just looks awful. See all the warping around him? Let's slow it down to 25% so that you can see it a bit better. See how it warps here and around my legs over here? It's pretty obvious and it doesn't look good at all. 
Here's another 23.976 frames per second shot of ducks at Lake Blade at 100% speed. This shot has a bit more movement in it, and if I slow it down to 5% with optical flow turned on, you can see that Final Cut Pro does a pretty good job of slowing this clip down. I've found optical flow to work with a lot of clips that I throw at it, and for footage shot at 24, 25, or 30 frames per second, it seems to work best when there isn't too much movement going on in the frame. When I shoot footage at 120 frames per second and I slow it down past 20%, optical flow seems to handle most of the clips that I throw at it. That's it for this video on how to create super slow motion in Final Cut Pro using optical flow. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when we post new videos. See you in the next one.